Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist, author, Bible journaler, and in this video, your art therapist. And today I'm going to show you how to make these beautiful pencils. And I'm going to be doing it in my Bible Journaling Made Simple workbook, which is printed on Bible paper. In my Bible, I did this page on Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The pencils are really simple. They're just rectangular shapes with a point on one end, and you can color just the colored part, or you can also add a little tan color for the wood to create that. You can also make shadows. And if you put a little bit of darker color at the bottom of each one of these long pencils, then you'll see a little bit of shading happening. So it'll look a little bit rounded and they look great flat or rounded, whichever way you'd like to do. If you're doing them in your Bible, you might use the lines that are printed there for journaling. And you can make skinny pencils using one line per pencil. Well, you can make a little fatter ones by doing two at a time to make one pencil. So whatever works for you. When I chose which color to journal the text in, on the light colors, I used a black pen. And on the dark colors, I used a white pen. And that kept everything nice and readable. The whole idea of this page is very simple. And rather than thinking, oh, Sandy's made a really simple video here, I want to add a challenge to this one. Because when I wrote this book, I didn't just want to have a coloring book for you. I wanted something that was going to be spiritually uplifting as well as artistically. And what I did was create on each, almost every one of these pages until you get to the back section, there are prompts. And prompts are just questions to get you to do some journaling. The questions on this particular page are, what is your art story? What are your earliest memories of creating? How did it feel to make beautiful things? What were your favorite things to create? And you can tackle just one of these questions. You can tackle all of them. You can take several pages and continue on with journaling your story. What I find is that most people, when they were little kids, had a good relationship with art. When we're little, we just make things. We don't worry about whether it looks like something or not, because to us, when we draw a dog, it doesn't look like an elephant. It looks like a dog. We knew exactly what we were doing. But at some point along the way, we lose that. And as adults, we get to this point where we're frozen in trying to create art because we see something beautiful. We want it to look like that. We don't understand that that's a journey to get there. And we are in a different place in our journey than we were when we were little. We're not where we're going to be 10 years from now, but we are where we're meant to be. And that's okay. And sometimes just journaling about that childhood experience and that childhood love of creating is really valuable. If you don't remember some of your earliest art and your earliest art experiences, Talk to a parent if you still have your parents around and ask them what your relationship was like as a child. Did you like to draw? What kind of things did you draw? And journal about that. If you have an experience you can remember about when you were thwarted, when there was somebody who said something to you and stopped you from feeling creative, what was that like? And can you give that to God? Can you have him work in your heart to let that go so that as an adult, you can continue to create art without that burden of those memories of something that was said that shouldn't have been. There was someone who said something to me as a young child, and I recall it very clearly. But as an adult, when I journal about it, I can see where that was all about that person. That was not about me. It was not about my art. And sometimes just sitting down and talking to God about it helps to let those things go so that we can be freed up in our art now. And as Bible journalers, our art is worship. Our art is not meant to be hung on a wall and critiqued by the masses. It might be something you want to post on Pinterest or Instagram or something, but it's not the goal. The goal is to create art that is in worship of God. Art that reminds you of the truths of Scripture so that you're able to better engage with the Lord and get deeper into your own spiritual journey through artwork. And if you can let go of some of those things that get in your way, 
it's going to help to free you as an adult artist. I hope this little art therapy session helped to some extent. I've written those questions in the description, and if you'd like to answer them in the comments and go do some journaling on your own, please feel free to do that. And I will see you guys again next week with another Bible journaling video, just like I do every Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye.